What's up, everybody? Monday, October 12th, going through the biggest storylines here in the NFL, and there is no bigger storyline than Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott. We all saw it, the gruesome ankle injury. Thankfully, diagnosis is saying that won't be a long-term career-threatening injury, but he will be gone the rest of the season. Surgery went successful, but let's turn our attention to the Cowboys, Sally. Are they legitimate contenders? Can they compete in the NFC East and the NFC with Andy Dalton at quarterback? Yeah, we already know they can win the NFC East. You know, Andy Dalton has won division titles before. Um, and I think he showed it when he came into the game yesterday. He was able to get him into the end zone. He was able to go three for three on that final drive uh, to Michael, or excuse me, to, uh, to Amari Cooper and then getting the ball over to the talented receiver, Michael Gallup, just showed out. But I think Dalton has proven that they have security at the quarterback position. I think defensively, I'm not feeling good at all about this Dallas Cowboy defense going up against the Giants offense that couldn't score touchdowns in their previous two games, and they scored three against the Cowboys defense yesterday. This Cowboys defense giving up more points per game than any other team in the league, and so that's where my biggest concern is, not at the quarterback position. Yeah, I think there's different answers. Can they compete in the NFC East? Yes. Uh, it's seven and nine might win that division. Uh, but I don't have much confidence in them competing in the NFC anymore on a larger scale. They've just had too much injuries, uh, too many injuries on offense between Dak Prescott, Tyron Smith, Lyle Collins, uh, Blake Jarwin. And that offense is really what had to carry that team because if you've seen through the first five weeks of the season, the defense isn't going to do it. Um, to, so I, I don't think they can compete with the Packers, uh, the Seahawks, the Saints if they get back in that conversation. Yeah, if we're talking about the NFC East. Honestly, I'd still say that they're the favorites for the NFC East just because of how poor that division is. But even in the NFC, even with Dak Prescott, I don't think they were serious contenders. That defense is too porous, too many holes. I mean, you're going to have to go up against the likes of Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Tom Brady to go through the NFC at this point. That was never going to happen with that defense. So I do just think the Cowboys, where it stands right now, they're going to be a fun team to watch week in and week out, even with Andy Dalton, because a lot of quarterbacks are still going to put up big numbers with Michael Gallup, CeeDee Lamb, and Amari Cooper, at wide receiver. But I do not believe they're serious contenders. Yeah, Charles Haley and Deion Primetime Sanders is not walking through that door for the Dallas Cowboys defense. Guys, let's move on, because yesterday the Atlanta Falcons – they decided to depart from their general manager, Thomas Dimitrov, their head coach, Dan Quinn. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons are now 0-5. So I understand that now uh, they're going to go um, with a new head coach, an interim head coach. Uh, but what do they do now in the long term? The trendy thing right now is to say trade Matt Ryan, trade Julio Jones, uh, and go full rebuild with a new head coach and new GM. But I don't know how much sense that makes for Atlanta when you're looking at their roster. They have one of the tightest cap situations in the NFL in 2021. And I do think there's still some talent uh, to build around. I don't think this is a bad roster necessarily. They just haven't been able to put it all together with some injuries in recent years, um, so some misses on draft picks. So I would say retool uh, more so than full rebuild necessarily. Yeah, I, the, what they need to do is just draft better. You have a legit offense. You have a quarterback in Matt Ryan who's not that old. You, he has about, you know, I think four or five more years left, which is a window in the NFL. They have the pieces to get it done offensively. But if you look back through their last four drafts, they have one impact starter they've drafted in four years now, and that's Calvin Ridley at wide receiver. No one on the defensive side of the ball has hit there. No real impact players. And that's why you see, you know, a defensive-minded head coach have one of the worst defenses in the NFL is because of that. So draft better uh new scheme defensively what they were running trotting out there just has been sort of i mean that has been the scheme du jour that covered three for the last decade and we've seen it kind of fall out of favor for a number of teams the seahawks not playing great defense over there in seattle as well so i do think that uh just some new uh sort of messaging at the top is going to help that team turn around i think they're close mini rebuild you don't need to trade matt ryan i just think you need to draft a little bit better than they have in recent years yeah, we'll have to wait and see if uh, Raheem Morris is the long-term answer. He will be the interim coach moving forward. But philosophically, let's face it, this team has to do better of drafting and in free agency when it comes to building their team in the trenches. They have missed way too many times in terms of trying to build a tough and physical and consistent offensive line. They have missed in free agency at signing edge rushers and only whiffing 
and spending money on the wrong player at the wrong time. So clearly the general manager and head coach have to be in lock sync in terms of what they're going to do in terms of building this team in the trenches. They've got to be more mentally tough when it comes to getting off to the slow starts each of the last three seasons and their inability to close out football games. So I just gave you several boxes they're going to have to check when it comes to looking for their next general manager and head coach. Yeah, when you look at the biggest weakness on this this Falcons team right now, it's the secondary. And it's not like they haven't devoted resources uh, to trying to fix it. It's just those guys haven't worked out. Um, so I agree with you guys there. Uh, but last week on Sunday, yesterday, uh, one of the bigger surprises of the day was the Raiders upsetting the undefeated uh, defending Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs. Does that make them AFC West contenders? No, I do not believe so. And now this is almost the opposite of the Cowboys answer, though, where they're not going to overtake the Chiefs in the AFC West, but they have beaten quality teams. I mean, they beat the Chiefs. Yes, one game. I don't foresee them over the course of the season being the Chiefs, but they also beat the Saints in the NFC, two of the top teams in the NFL. They've proven they can beat. And I love the way they built this offense with maybe the most physical offensive line in the NFL and then some speed now finally at receivers to expand the field for Derek Carr and make it more than 10 yards. Uh, down the field that he's only throwing to. So I do think that they can compete in the AFC when it comes to playoff time, but I just do not see them over the course of a 16-game schedule being able to deal with the Chiefs because they're just so consistent, Kansas City is offensively week in and week out, that you basically have to play perfect to beat them. You know, when this team went into the draft, the Raiders, during the 2020 offseason, they wanted to find a player who was kind of like Tyreek Hill. Maybe they found him in Henry Ruggs after that 72-yarder uh, yesterday. Clearly has the speed to stretch the field and open it up. We've been waiting for this because we know what Darren Waller gives them in the underneath. We know about the running game um, and Josh Jacobs. They just needed to that someone to remove defenders from the box. And we know that their quarterback yesterday, Derek Carr, outplayed Patrick Mahomes. Now, can he do that every single week? I mean, we're a far cry from that. But at least we saw who the Raiders can be. And so if the question is, are they legitimate contenders? Absolutely, they scored 40 points against uh, the Kansas City Chiefs at Arrowhead Stadium. Um, and I think that was significant. The fact that they went out there looking for a shootout against the Chiefs and they were able to outscore them. And so the defense got after Patrick Mahomes. I think the Raiders showed us exactly who they can be. Right now, they're scoring more points per game than the Kansas City Chiefs are on offense. So I'm going to say yes. I think they are a legitimate contender. Now they just got to show us some consistency. I don't know if I can say legitimate contender in the AFC West. I still think that's the Chiefs division to lose. But the big takeaway from yesterday was they did exactly what everyone has been asking them to do, which is push the ball downfield. Henry Ruggs, Nelson Aguilar were getting open, like you guys said. And Derek Carr was hitting them. Um, and he's shown that he can hit uh, receivers downfield. They just don't do a ton of that. Um, so, so I think if that continues, it makes them more of a serious contender. And I do think they're definitely in that AFC wildcard conversation. Uh, but this is still the Chiefs division to lose. You want to get rid of me and get back to more great PFF YouTube content? All you have to do is push that button right there and subscribe. Thanks for watching.